hello one and all, welcome to Seeing Through Glass. It's a big day, it's a sad day. If you're new to the channel, it's important that you know I have a long-term love affair with the Jaguar F-Type. So long, it actually predates the existence of this channel. I've got to go all the way back to 2014, when my mum was looking to replace her Audi S5. We went together to a Jaguar dealership to check out the F-Type. It had just launched, just been unveiled, and neither of us had seen it in the flesh. And whilst we were going there for her, I immediately fell in love with the car, just based on the way it looks. So much so that I actually begged the dealer to let me go for a test drive in a V6S. About 200 meters down the road, I realized that at some point in my life, I needed to own one of these cars. And then, just a year or so later, I ended up buying a first gen V8R, the 550 horsepower rear wheel drive car. And it's really that car that I think started my YouTube career. Lots of you have been around since the Alfa Romeo 4C days. Some of you have even been around since my Audi TTS days. But I owned those cars whilst I was still doing YouTube part-time. When I got the F-Type, I took it on a trip, which is now a historic trip, down to Monaco, Schmier 150, Paul from Supercars London, and seeing them operate their YouTube channels as professionals, doing it as their career, I was like, I want to do that. And I decided at that, mo at that moment that I was going to go full-time with YouTube. And so the following 12 or 18 months, which really saw me embark on this insane journey, also saw me behind the wheel of an F-Type. And lots of you remember that car. It was a stunning red car that from factory was a great spec and quite bizarrely was at one point Ian Callum, the F-Type designer's company car. That time, I didn't quite realize the significance of that, but it's made my journey with this car even more sort of romantic over time. But yeah, lots of you remember, I very quickly modified it, applied the Project 7 livery, which many of you called the white dot livery, because it had a racing roundel on the door, put a big old rear wing on the back, a super loud, super unnecessary Quicksilver exhaust, and took that car all over Europe on some incredible adventures. And actually, I met my now wife, the mother of my daughter. Again, making the F-Types presence in my life even more significant. And I absolutely adored it, but for some reason, for some unknown reason, I decided to sell it. I mean, I actually do know the reason, but because back then on YouTube, it was a dog-eat-dog -dog world of who could get the newest and best supercar fa fastest. And I, I fell victim to that. I went, you know what, I've got to change things up. But for any of you who've been watching since, yeah, 2016-ish, you'll know that I regretted that decision almost instantly. And I was very vocal about the fact. I didn't hide that I really, really missed my F-Type. And I looked for any opportunity to get back in one. I borrowed an F-Type SVR to power through Europe and do some adventures with Paul Wallace from Supercars London. I also borrowed F-Types in America. Even during Drive the World, my big round the world adventure, I looked for excuses to get back into F-Types. I finally drove a Project 7 and drove an SVR in Canada. And actually it was during Drive the World, the Jag launched the facelift F-Type, the updated F-Type. But I had to wait because I was on that mad round the world adventure. So I didn't get behind the wheel of the updated F-Type until some point in 2020 driving it, I went, yeah, they've just moved it forward. It is still the car that I love and adore, but it's now better than ever. And so, a few years ago, I declared publicly, openly, yes, it's time. And F-Type is coming back to the channel and back into my life. I didn't know quite then exactly which F-Type. I was umming and ahhing, but Alexander's Prestige very kindly lent me an awesome all-black SVR, the 
and then Jag got in touch and said, hey, we've heard. We've heard you're thinking of getting another F-Type. Whilst you make your mind up, why don't we lend you a new convertible V8R. Full 575 PS, shouty, updated version. And I was like, yes, please do. <laughs> Knowing full well that spending some time in that car was probably gonna mean I wanted one permanently. And that's what happened. I ordered myself an F-Type R Coupe Truffle. It's been on the channel nearly a year now. I've absolutely adored it. And as my last video would have suggested, I've done around 10,000 miles. Why am I telling you all this? Why am I recounting my journey with the Jaguar F-Type? That's because I'm here in Spain in a very special F-Type. The last F-Type. Because yes, this year, Jaguar is ceasing production of this iconic sports car. And with it, we'll see the end of the combustion-engined Jaguar sports car. They will be no more. Jaguar going through a major rebrand, most of which will be focused around electric vehicles. So we are saying goodbye to a stratospherically important thing, the Jaguar sports car. The V8 Jaguar sports car. It's very hard for me to put into words exactly why I think these cars are so fantastic. But I've spent the last seven years trying to tell you all. If you've never driven an F-Type, go and do it. But be warned that when you do, you will end up parting with quite a large amount of cash because it is an addictive experience. And I don't think there are really any other cars in this space that have the same character and personality that a Jaguar F-Type does. Okay, they might not be the quickest around the Nürburgring. They might not be as loaded with tech as some of their competitors. But whatever the downsides are, or potential downsides of an F-Type, none of it matters because of the way these cars make you feel in any situation. I'm out here on some beautiful roads. I've enjoyed the most incredible sunrise. And I'm going fast, but I'm also cruising. It, these cars make the journey memorable. It doesn't matter what journey, even if you just pop into the local shops, the way it sounds, the way it looks, the way it feels inside, the materials, the design, it hasn't needed to change that much over the years because dare I say it, it's borderline iconic. And hey look, I'm biased and of course you're going to expect me to say this, but in 50 years will the world look back at the F-Type in the same way we look at the E-Type? I think so. Because it is just such a special bit of kit that brings out something in you as a driver, as an owner. It makes you feel special. And as the world moves forward, I think fewer and fewer cars do that. There's also a slightly sinister evil side to a Jag, which with these final F-Type 75 editions, they're kind of hinted towards, they're sort of stealthy. Some of the cars here are actually literally stealth black. And that's what's cool about Jag. It, it, it's literally that cool. It's just got that cool factor. Wherever you go, you might be making a lot of noise and turn up at great speed, but it feels like other people appreciate the cars. They're not showy-offy, they're elegant. They're sophisticated. See someone in a Jag, you go, yes. Good choice, sir. So there's a huge part of me that is legitimately very emotional today because with the end of production for the F-Type is gonna mark the end of my latest journey or time with one of these cars. I unfortunately do have to change up the cars in my garage. I do now have a baby and it's unrealistic for me to have 
three two-seater sports cars. And the journey I've been on with these cars over the last seven years has been monumental. And it's actually been perfect. I genuinely believe it's been a perfect journey. And will I own another F-Type again in the future? 100%. These cars will come and go out of my life, for sure. It is so spectacular. And if Jeremy Clarkson used to say, you're not a true petrol head until you've owned an Alpha, I genuinely believe you're not a true British petrol head until you've at least experienced an F-Type. Just like that, I'm down off the mountains, into town. Yeah, it's time for me to wrap things up. It's time for us to wrap up the F-Type story. This beautiful F-Type 75 is a great way for Jag to send off this car. I think the spec is fantastic. It's got some lovely little details on it that if you're lucky enough to pick up one of these, Heck, if I'm lucky enough to pick up one of these in the future, it'll be a nice way to signify, yeah, the combustion engine Jaguar sports car, which will be no more. It's a mind boggling thing to say. But I'm gonna sit here and apologies to the Jag PR team and tell you, you don't have to buy the F-Type 75. Just go and buy any of them. Honestly, I'll always lean towards the V8, but V6, V6S, even the four cylinder. These cars are glorious. And as I say, whilst Truffle might be going a little bit later this year, there'll always be a Jag in my heart, as corny as that might sound. And it will never be too long between ownership experiences, I'm sure. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the throwback. I'll leave you now with some of my favorite F-type memories over the last seven years. And I hope it motivates you to get out there and get yourself one of these cars. I've got myself a Jaguar F-type R Coupe. The 4C is gone. The 4C is no more. It has been replaced with this Jaguar and I am so happy. I'm gonna kill us. I'm gonna kill us. <laughs> Literally in a straight line out on the hill, I floored it in like fifth gear and I went to the other side of the road. As you probably saw from my reactions, what a freaking beast that thing is. <laughs> Thank you.